Florida is known for being home to a large Hispanic and Latino population, but many of those people are not native English speakers, making Spanish the most spoken language here in Florida behind English. All new this morning, Channel 9's Giovanni Diaz reports bilingual households have a different routine when it's time to head back to school. I want to contemplate in English. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Denise Batista proudly watches as her sons Brian and Kevin talk to me, switching back and forth between English and Portuguese. But Brian is quick to say which one is his favorite. I talk more English. Since they were born, uh, was my uh, my husband and my decision to talk in Portuguese with them because we wanted them to learn Portuguese. English is going to be the primary language, but we always thought that it would be great if they could uh, speak both languages. Batista, who was born and raised in Brazil, moved to the United States in her 20s, and she knows the importance of knowing a second language. I think it's a victory. Seriously, uh, I think they're going to have better chance in the future because they can communicate in both languages. My friends that speak two languages fluent uh, make more money. So they're super excited about that. The Batista household is just one of the hundreds of thousands in Florida with a non-English shared language. According to the 2022 census, nearly 30% of the households in Florida reported speaking a different primary language. And that number is almost 10% higher than the national average, making Florida one of the states with the most bilingual households in the country. All over the world, there's many children who are learning more than one language at a time. And this is something that children actually do very beautifully. Dr. Katrina Stone, who's an expert on child learning and behavior, says living in a bilingual environment is actually helpful to the children. There is some research that suggests um, that being bilingual helps you to be more flexible cognitively. Um, also, there's some research that suggests you have that foundation and it makes it easier for you to learn a, a third language. Dr. Stone is also clarifying an old myth about speaking different languages at home. Sometimes families will come and they know their child's going to be um, learning in English and they'll think I only need to speak English to my child so they're prepared for school. But what that takes away is the ability to have that conversation in a home language about conceptual um, ideas and understanding. The expert also says consistency is essential and that's something Denise also agrees. They are super good. They are growing and they are a, B, student. I'm very proud of them. They do a good work. I think really important to remember you're giving your child a huge gift by giving them the gift of a second language. And Dr. Stone also says the younger the better when it comes to implementing a new language, even if the parent is not bilingual. Reporting in studio, I'm Giovanni Diaz, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. I know Alexa and I both come from bilingual households and my mother was very, uh, it was important to her to make sure that I kept speaking Spanish at home and it was helpful in school as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lasting impact, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shields household mess, we're just lingual, so it's <laughs> Just not, lingual, it's not, is that the thing? We are trying. Is that being we whelmed, are, like overwhelmed under, just I whelmed? I think so, I You're think just that's, we're just, just whelmed. Just lingual Let's uh, get you outside this morning.